G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, look what's on my workbench. I have done quite a lot of work on this Deutschland class battleship conversion. The funnels are nearly there. I'm still working on those, just finishing them off. But I basically got the shapes in. That's what we did in the last video. In this video, I'll show you how I've completely cut that back end out. Because if you remember, the actual 1935 version has a full deck all the way through and superstructure all the way up. Well, I've cut all of that away Put in the deck a bit lower so it fits with the 1908 deck which was in the kit which gives you the nice cutouts and I've added blast shields here for the guns. There's quite a lot of little finagling going on in here. So would you like to see how I accomplished that? You would? Great! Roll the music! <laughs> I had created some extra funnels and I've been working on with that. I've cut down the fore funnel, which was a funny sort of um, double leg shape, and that's now a single funnel for the front. I'm still working on casting a better center funnel, but what I've got to make things easier is I have this, which is supposedly a UV light. It sort of works, it takes a while, it takes about half an hour to set, but it's not hot. So it's not melting my um, molding because my blue stuff molds are heat reactive as well. So when I put those guys out in the sun in their molds, the molds all bent and I ended up with um, sort of wobbly parts. So I'm pursuing that. I've also got to order some more scratch material so I could have a look at um, making the scratch one as well. So I'm pursuing both those as a sideline. Now, what I really want to do in this video is get on with um, scratch funnels. What we want to really seriously look at here is cutting all of this way so that we can get the deck open and we can get it down to one deck instead of two decks so we convert from the 1935 to the 1908 version. So what I've got here are diagrams. They're actually the painting uh, layouts for both the trumpeter kits. So it was easy enough to get those off the web and then print them out side by side so that the kit reference matches the kit reference. I've also got um, historical photos as well. Yes, hysterical ones. They're very funny. And I'm using those to even further get the details right down the track. But at the moment, I'm just trying to block in the basic areas. So what we're going to do in this video is get rid of this huge block of flats here. Right, they're pretty bloody horrible. We're going to cut it down to how it should be just the uh, the one superstructure level and then work out what parts we need for everything that goes inside there because the, um, the interior part is very different but there are parts in the kits as I showed in the last video there are some parts in the kits can be reused and some of them can be adjusted and repurposed so in this video I hope to go from that to that for the superstructure so I have this part of the instructions from the 1908 version of the trumpeter kit which is going to be very useful now these markings i put on before they were as best as i could work out when i was just using basically the larger drawings and going off the photos but now i have the actual part that it should be so knowing how they constructed it is going to help me in how i need to convert it so let me refine where i've got to cut around here and just make some notes on this and then we will start hacking into this so I begin by marking out the areas that I want to cut away and I've referred to the diagrams and had a quick look and I don't need that centre tunnel anymore. I've realised I need to get rid of all of that but just keep that little piece there support. Now before you get started always grab a new blade. I mean pretty well whenever I start a new model I start a new blade but if you're doing anything like this that's going to require lots of cutting and shutting and ficking and facking. Yep you're going to need a new blade so there you go. On she goes. Don't cut yourself, Harry. Yep. No, all good. Get on with it. Come on. This is boring. <laughs> Let's do some cutting. All right, he's into it. Now, because there's a little edge there, I can use that as a profile to cut against. So this bit's fairly easy. So I can sort of get started with that. And it really doesn't take that many light cuts. There are always lots of light cuts. Never try and do it all at once. You'll end in tears. You'll slip and you'll bloody cut your arm off, you know. And I can cut it from the bottom as well. So knowing exactly where to go. 
this is the thing it's a slow process you take your time when you're doing stuff like this i mean not only measure twice cut once but cut slowly just you know don't be in a hurry because that's when you make mistakes okay so i think he's just about cut through how you going harry come on a couple more strokes should just about go through mate yep oh it's breaking open there we go and there you are it's open so that's good all right moving along now just basically making sure that cut is all the way through it is now i need to sort of work towards that and taking out just half so i'm going to hacksaw in here or whatever you call this hobby blade whatever that thing's called it's like a little hacksaw that's what i call it and uh, score edges as much as possible anywhere that you're going to have a cut line or a little score because if it breaks out or it snaps loose or whatever if you've got a score line there it's going to break cleanly and preserve the area you want to keep now this piece here was annoying this little stuck out bit so i decided i'll just cut straight through it with the saw and that'll be a lot easier and i'll deal with that little bumpy bit later and it uh, does prove to be a little problem but i'll get around it okay so with that cut across there and i've sort of got that out now here's a trick with the drill okay i've got things here that i've i've got to figure out from the inside exactly where i need to cut them so if I drill above my score line and make a hole a little pilot holes there, this is just a little 0.5 millimeter drill, I can see those holes and then it's a fairly easy job to score the knife. Now it's always easy to cut between two drilled holes with a knife. You can pretty well just poke it in one hole and it'll just force straight across into the next one. So that gives you a way to, to cut great big holes and things. But be very careful, don't put that right next to your finished edge because it's going to be very rough. Using a rule whenever possible, it's kind of handy for making sure that you get those cut lines nice and straight. So there we go, that's cut through there, it's cut through there. Okay, what I need to do now is I'll use the drill bit trick again, and this gives me points that if I drill them through, I can use that to mark on this side, and I know I've got a cut line. So I know I need to cut there, so I can score that so I can help the plastic snap all the way through and there you go it's already broken because there's the score on the other side so that's the thing scoring one side scoring the other side putting in points that are referenced it all helps now again getting the um, hacksaw or whatever you call it in there and pushing down with the final cut with my nice sharp blade all right that's all coming together fairly nicely where else do I need to cut all oh, this whole back area so again drilling some little pilot holes is going to help me on this side knowing where I've got to cut. I can also reference like physical points of the moulding, the superstructure. So I know that little point there was the edge for the diagonal line. Again, getting in with my little blade, cutting along all these edges and lines I've made. I don't have to be too accurate at the back here because this will all get sanded pretty flat and there's a bulkhead that goes in there, hides a myriad of things and the deck on the top also hides it but it's always good to basically well do best practice always do your best even if it's a part that's going to be hidden consider it practice because while you're doing that you're learning the skills and the thing is it's better sort of bugger up or learn how to do stuff on things that are not going to be seen so then when you get to the sections that are going to be seen you've got the skill set so again drilling the holes here to make sure that that curve on the top matches the curve underneath because it's a bit hard to tell with the molding sort of what's going on so yeah it wasn't far off but it's a lot faster anyway if you've got all those um, little circles to cut through so you can get through this whole thing a lot quicker all right I've got a piece that's nearly loose there nearly loose so to make this easier well first I'll oh, hang on I've got a bit here I missed get over there Harry you forgot that but drill a couple of holes mate get in there and you can basically cut that piece free yeah people are watching they're expecting something important here. Yeah, you've got to look like you know what you're doing, mate. This is just not good enough. This is not good enough. All right, so, has he got that out of the way? He's still, we're still messing around. Bloody hell, mate. I mean, I know there's less waffle now in the videos. There's certainly a lot more kafangling. Yeah, all right. This is the thing. Doing this sort of stuff is slow. And you do it piece by piece and you take your time. All right, what I'm doing here is, because I've got a section that's fairly free, I can cut it out by using the score, bend and snap method. And that means now I've got a lot more freedom here and I can see what I'm doing. 
So I tend to do that. I tend to cut things out, remove them as I go. I don't have to cut the whole thing out in one piece. I didn't need to preserve that. It's just going to be waste, so it doesn't matter. A little bit of tidy up as I go, but I'll be doing a complete tidy up later. Okay, got both sides cut out now, so just a little bit of finishing. I've got little sort of elbows stuck in there, and I use a block of wood there popped up on my bench to push against because this thing's getting very springy now because there's a lot of holes in it. So, you know, okay, we need to start cutting that deck down. So less, less mucking around, more seriousness. I use features on the hull to help me out here because there's two little platforms there for guns and they determine basically the height of that deck. They're left over from the 1908 version. So that's great. I've got those marked. I know that whole section to be wasted. Now, I can get in here with my saw because I can run it basically using the deck as a guide. That was easy. And now I do the knife trick, holding everything very tight but being very gentle with that knife. I don't need much of a score. What I do need is to make sure both ends have been cut. So I've got a light score line there. I've cut both ends. All I've got to do now is give it a push. A bit more of a score, hey? All right. Because I've got the line, and if I'm careful, I can run the blade along that perfectly straight line, and uh, oh, it's going to come out, Harry. Hmm, it certainly does seem to be a bit tough. So we'll get the pliers out. The pliers help pull along that cut line, and I should be able to now go snap. There we go. That's out, and we have finally cut down to that deck level. So there's a rough mock-up of where we're going. That's the... Um, the old deck will be hiding underneath there. Right, but we'll have to get that at the same level. We'll have to chop that up to fit it in there. But our piece is fitting very nicely. That's our 1908 upper deck. It's fitting very nicely over that now. Now, yeah, it is rough. It is rough. It's supposed to be. You never cut right up to the edges that you need. You always cut up close to them. And then what you do is you start filing down and cutting down to the line so that you end up with a really smooth joint. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tidy all this up until I get this perfectly smooth. Then I'm going to have to cut this so that this piece can go in side there and I'll um, save a few of these bits because they'll get used later on as well. Time for some sanding. And you've really got to take your time with this and have some patience because you get a little bit too excited, you'll, you'll cut off too much or especially if you're using a knife to trim, you'll sort of wreck things. So you just do a little bit and you test it and say, well, how's that going? All right, sand a little more. Just enjoy it. Put some music on. The whole thing when you're doing conversion like this is you're not going to get a second chance. So you bugger this up, you're going to have to buy another kit. So take your time. Take your time. Nice and easy. All right, I think we've done enough sand there, Harry. Oh, a bit of blade work. All right. Yeah, just a couple of little sort of peaks there that really are being a bit stubborn. Okay, got those off. Again, final sand. Hopefully we've just about got it. Just about got it. How does that look? Test. Yep, I think that's looking pretty good. All right, so with that all sanded up, I've done both sides and all the interior. We do a little test fit. And okay, I've got to cut a few things off this deck. This is the 1935 deck that um, I would have used on this kit if I'd built that version. So I've got a couple of little tabs here. I've got to remove those so I can get it to fit on the inside. And that all needs sanding, of course, so it can fit in. Well, that's good. That works. But there's also some more little tabs and things here. Let's get rid of the back end because that's sort of getting in the way too. Just an approximate cut for the moment, just to basically so it's not you know poking around everywhere. Oh, I've got some more little tabs there to remove, so I need to cut those off. So using a rule, I can push up against the side of the deck there. So I know I'm basically still running along the same profile and cut that off. Again, score, bend, snap, and then get your sander out. Give it a bit of a light smooth. These block sanders I've got, these will tear right into this plastic. So they're quite good for this sort of stuff. This one, I just had to eyeball it because there's sort of no way to get, a, um, get the rule in there. There's too much junk on the deck in the way, but it's not too bad. And the thing is, I'm going to fit this, sand it, fit this, sand it quite a few times until I know I can put it in and it fits perfectly. Again, taking your time is the trick here, making sure that everything fits. Well, look, I'm getting there. That's starting to look really good. That looks like that was meant to be there, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, 
don't rest on my laurels. What I have to do now is make sure that I can get the thing to join perfectly because at the moment I rough cut the edge. So I'll need a pencil in where I need to actually cut that midship line there. Yeah. In hindsight, I probably should have made it a bit further along and it would have been hidden across that beam that runs on the deck above it all the way across. But this is how I did it. And it's okay. It all gets painted up and smoothed up later. You know, you'll never know. But if you're doing yours, you might consider cutting a little bit further along. All right, so that's cut. Pliers out again. I've cut bigger than I need. You can see I'm actually well past that uh, mark. That's because I'm going to sand and fit and sand and fit, sand and fit this. And that's the thing. Don't try and do it all in once. Sand it, fit it, sand it, fit it. And then hopefully, yep, that clicks in. Not too bad at all. That's getting bloody close, Harry. Yep, I say so myself. I've also had to cut a little indentation out at the top there so that fits into that little sort of sticky up thing. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. And as you can see, it all comes together well. And it just looks like the kit. What I need to do now is put some reinforcing in. So there's a couple of points there where I can use edges of the deck that's already in there or some of the little parts of the um, superstructure. And I should be able to mount a few little um, braces on there. So I'm just cutting out. This is one and a half millimeter card. It's just what I had lying around. And I've cut out a big long, I think it's like a five millimeter strip. Just something I can use. It'll never be seen. So I'm not worried about it being too pretty. Uh, but you know, it's it's going to do the job and it's strong enough. Two millimeters probably better, but I had this and that'll do. Okay. This is fairly easy. You can use the measure, but um, quite frankly, this sort of stuff, I go by feel a lot and, you know, make it it's a little bit big, sand it down, make sure that it fits perfectly. Because I want tight fits, you know, I don't want anything sloppy. So there we go. That one's not too bad. A little bit of cleaning still. How are we going? Yep, I think we got it. That is going to be fine. Now, little test. Yep, that'll sit in there nicely. Happy with that. Okay, there's two spots here, which are those um, gun platforms, and I can basically cut a little rounded edge there on my styrene and that will fit in nicely into there so that I can put another little brace. So this is the sort of thing we used to do old days with ship kits is really the decks you know used to sag if you didn't need to do this. You know you'd leave them on the shelf for a couple of years and your deck would sag so we'd always put bracing in. Now with the Revel Contactor and this is going to give me a really good bond. If you use something like Tamiya Thin here look you might, it might work, you'd have to leave it to really cement hard, you might want to sort of really sort of um, you know, clamp it up, but using contactor, this stuff really welds plastic together. So if you need a really strong bond, contactor is the way to go. So all my dry fitting and testing and sanding should have worked, and this part should fit perfectly. In fact, it's really tight, so it needs, it needs to be square. Yep, there you go, Harry, you've got it square now. Okay, so that's fitting in there nicely, that is going to be good and that is going to support my custom scratch deck. The next thing I need to do is, oh, I need to address that hole. It's really annoying because that was that box that I had to cut off and left a hole. I've got the part, the little box, and I'm wondering if I can repurpose that. So just sort of checking its dimensions and having a, having a bit of a fiddle and a feel there. I think I could probably use that and cut it up. So I've already chopped the sides off and I've got it pretty well down to size. I'm just doing the last bit of trimming and again this is a sort of cut it a bit bigger than you think you need and then slowly cut it down and slowly cut it down so um, yep that should fit nicely there we go fits perfectly Harry just needs a little bit off the top there mate yeah so we'll just mark that and this is the thing scratching is all about fitting things and marking things and adjusting things and that's what it's all about you take your time. Don't be in a rush ever to do it because, you know, you really just got to sort of be nice and relaxed about it all. All right. How are we looking? You got it? There we go. Does it fit? I think it does. There's nothing more rewarding than making a tiny little part that fits into a tiny little space and it fits so well that by the time you glue it up, it's going to be practically invisible. And I like that. I really sort of enjoy the challenge of, you know, making that, that little bit that's going to go in there. And no one's ever going to know, only me. Because by the time it's all done and sanded and painted, 
<laughs> There's nothing to see. Nothing to see here. Move along. All right, there we go. It's been left to set. So hopefully those strengthening beams there are set nicely in place. Look like they have. I did have to cut this back a bit because once I'd actually put these beams in, I couldn't get this whole thing to fit together properly. Because um, I now need to push it in here. And then click it past there, which it just does. Yep. And that will fit in there pretty darn snugly. What I've got to do here is get this nice and level. This will not only add strength, but it makes sure everything stays nice and level. It'll sort of stop it lifting. It'll help the cementing process. So that should work well. Got a little glue blob there I might have to remove. It's alright. That's come along well. That's fine. And as you can see I've repaired that little piece there. So that will all need setting in place now. So I'll get that done and then we can get on to the missing shields that need to go along here. There's little gun shields here, 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 here all the way around. There's six of those to put on. Alright, let's get on with that. Okay, moment of truth. Rebel contactor in there on my little braces and uh, we'll see if this whole thing cements up. It should. It should fit. All that work thing is lots and lots and lots of trial fitting and testing and you know confangling and then hopefully when you come to gluing, look at that, fits like a glove. And I've got the little side bits of the deck to match up almost perfectly as well. It's not going to require much filler at all. Not at all. All I've got to do is get a few of these little um, clamps on there because I want to make sure that it stays level. There we go. That is going to be just like I bought one. Yep. Good job, Harry. Well done. You're well on the way to getting this battleship finished. The next thing I need to do is make a long strip here of two and a half millimeters in width and make a make a lot of them because these are going to be the gun shields so I make sure that is I think it's 22 millimeters long is what I needed measure in the middle and then six millimeters either side of the middle that gives me the center flat section and then what I've got to do is score gently at the point where it's going to curve up on each side now the method I use is finding something like this little piece of dowel I've got here and pushing the plastic onto it. Trick is to be use a, a dowel that's slightly narrower than what you want your actual curve to be because it always springs back out. So if you start with something that's a little bit narrower and try and get that curve, it's a, it's a bit fiddly but you can get there. Yep, there we go. And by having that little score line, that kind of preserves your straight edge. So it's only going to basically curve up from where that little score was. At least that's the theory kind of works. So look, that's not looking too bad. We're getting there. So all that's going to need is a bit of bit of pressure there and we've got it. Okay, I've got one to do on the other side as well. So again, the same sort of technique is basically push up and push around, try and get that thing to curve. And it takes a bit of fiddling. It's, um, it's a skill that you sort of, you acquire and you get quite, um, you get quite brave at it. First you think you're going to wreck and bugger the whole thing, but you know, after a while you sort of, you know how far you can push it. This plastic is very malleable, so, you know, this sort of technique is a very, very old technique for creating curves. There we go. Just like I bought one. That'll be perfect. And here we go. Does it fit? Yes. Spot on. Well done, Harry. I like that. So there we go. I've accomplished everything I set out to do in converting the 1935 superstructure to the 1908 layout. So this deck has now been lowered and it's cut in and assembled and added to that other deck. There's a bit of filler in there that's drying, it's been sanded. There'll be a little more sanding and cleaning up to do. I've added the gun shields and a little bit of superstructure that needed adding. That all went in well. Same procedure as I did with the these ones here, you just roll them, find something the right size or a little bit, a little bit narrow and you roll them. So I'm well on the way now to getting this into 1908 full configuration. 
I've got to add a few little things under there for the cranes. I've got to basically put the back bulkheads in and add a couple little boxes under there. That's not hard. I've got lots of leftover bits and pieces that I collected. So I've got a whole box of stuff here. So they will go in. And of course I have my funnels as well that I've finished. So that's kind of the worst of it, I think. That's the major surgery done. I'll have a good look at this with fresh eyes once I've had a bit of rest. And no doubt there'll be something that needs sanding or filling or touching up. Once I've got that pretty perfect, then I can start painting it. So if you're enjoying this um, conversion build, please hit the like, comment, just be nice about it, or subscribe to my channel, that'd be great. And if you really want to help me out, you can go to Patreon or become a YouTube member, and that gives me quite a shot in the arm, and then I can afford to feed Bass the Cat. All right, that's it for now. Next video will be a live show on the weekend. If you're a member, or if you're a patron, you know all about that. If not, sing me a line. I'll tell you all about that, how to get into the live show. But until next time, when I start putting in the armament, working out the boats, there's quite a few other things to do. And I might even start working on the masts as well. There's lots more to do to make this into the 1908 Deutschland class Schleswig Holstein. And I probably said that wrong. So on that note, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Ariadne. <laughs>